The scratch collapse test can help localize additional points of compression from the primary nerve injury. While difficult to determine a secondary compression point, this provocative test with ethyl chloride can determine a hierarchy to the nerve injury. This video demonstrates a scratch collapse test in a patient with a medial cord injury that localizes to the brachial plexus, however presents with intact median intrinsic muscles and atrophy of ulnar intrinsic muscles. The hierarchical scratch collapse with ethyl chloride reveals the deep motor branch of the ulnar nerve as a secondary compression point, followed by the cubital tunnel, antibrachial fascia, which includes the Guillain's canal, and arcuate struthers. So this is what we were noticing. Marked ulnar intrinsic atrophy. Now, he has a medial cord injury, medial cord plexus injury. When you look over here, he is more atrophic on the thenars than over here. But the, the difference between the atrophy on the ulnar intrinsics versus the atrophy on the thenars is not as, as much. And so I thought, huh, I wonder if he has a second hit on his ulnar nerve at the cubital tunnel and the and Guillain's canal. So do you have an electric shock in here? No. No. Anything here? No. No. So I thought, oh, well, maybe not. So that hypothesis is kind of out to lunch. Any electric shock in here? No. No tunnel anywhere. So then I thought, well, let's try the scratch collapse. Be strong here. So go to my control, plexus, plexus, and down he comes on the plexus. Uh, so then check out the cubital, negative on the cubital, negative on Guillain's. Hmm. Okay, so I thought, well, that's just interesting that he seems to be more trophic on the intrinsics ulnar. But then I thought, let's ethyl chloride and freeze out temporarily the um, plexus ac action. So that goes out, strong, strong, now check the cubital, strong, check Guillain's, down he comes on Guillain's. So isn't that interesting? So if we look at Guillain's and we come to the uh, uh, fascia that's thickened just above the wrist, how about the deep motor branch down here? And that's where he goes on the deep motor branch. So I'm, I'm scratching here, or specifically that deep motor branch where it comes around the hook of the handmate, or the fascia over the distal uh, wrist. So now I want to parse that out, and I want to check this versus this. So strong. Now the proximal fascia, he's strong. Deep motor branch, that's where he goes down, but not the elbow. So now take out the deep motor branch. Strong. Now how about the fascia here? Nope. How about the ulnar nerve here? Down he goes on the ulnar nerve. So here. The guillons is the deep motor branch. It's not that fascia. But at the ulnar nerve now, he goes down on the cubital. So if I take the cubital out as the third area of interest for him. Now strong. Let's come back and see if this antibrachial stuff is something. Yes, it is. That's the fourth. Let's freeze that out. Strong. Let's see if he's got any struthers. Strong. And he does have a struthers. Now, in between the struthers and the ulnar, okay. At the cubital, okay. Right where the struthers is, and down he goes on the struthers. So the reason I think that he has more ulnar intrinsic atrophy than median intrinsic atrophy with a medial cord injury is because he's got all these other little ulnar things coming down there.